There you go. All right. Let's open up for a prayer. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. And thank you for revealing things about peace as we uh, engage in prayer, Lord. And I thank you for your wisdom there. And in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Now, we know uh, uh, Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry. Uh, I encourage you to watch the video when I post it next this week. Um, ooh, I got muted. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, then, uh, you know, one of the outstanding characteristics of the triumphal entry is the fact that Jesus rode on an un unridden uh, colt, meaning the Prince of Peace was there, amen, and he was able to bring in, uh, uh, march in as the king, but he came in and, and it was as a king of peace. And since he is the Prince of Peace, we can always expect peace uh, from him and with him. When it comes to him, we can expect the peace of God. Amen? Now, um, in praying, I was thinking about that this afternoon. In praying, uh, I, I tell you what I'm going to share called praying to the peace. In praying, I've learned, at least in my experiences in my praying time, uh, to, to make sure I calculate my words before I speak them because see, when you speak, you, you release spiritual laws and, and you don't want to say things that are not uh, in line with scripture, in line with the spirit of God that is living on the inside. You don't want to speak those words or if you do, you know, you are releasing spiritual laws into motion. And uh, I know we all have released the bad things with the things we've said as well as the good things. Well. Try to measure that and try to speak the good thing, especially in prayer, and then not speak against it thereafter. Just keep on the same words, same belief. Um, so when I'm praying and I'm not and I'm not unfamiliar with how to pray or something, I usually uh, I won't speak sometimes until I have meditated and spoken those words in my mind. And, and when I do that, I'm looking to hear or sense or know that peace of God that passes all understanding. And the scripture says that, that in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 14, 15, 16, I'll read those verses. It says, but above, above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So where is the peace of God? It's in your hearts. Now, uh, it's important to understand that according to Galatians 5.22, the third uh, fruit of the Spirit that is inside your heart that you were born again with, the third one mentioned that Paul mentions in that verse, Galatians 5.22, is peace. you got love, joy, and peace. That's the third one in. You know, it's always funny when you hear people talk about love, joy, and peace, and I'm thinking, well, get saved. Get, get, get your mind renewed to the Word. If you want love, joy, and peace, that's, what you go, that's the only way you're going to get it. Amen. But anyway, see, and it says, let the peace of God rule or call the shots. Now, in other words, that, that Greek word there means umpire. So, in my mind, when I'm thinking about what I'm about to say, I measure how my heart reacts to what I'm thinking. In other words, I'm sensing whether or not if I say this, is there peace with me or not? And sometimes I have to wait, and I switch it up until I get my mind saying, and then when I, when I sense the peace and say, oh, okay, that's how I'm going to proceed with my actual voice and speak it in prayer. Because a lot of times, when it comes to peace, it's more about releasing that, that peace from your, your words. Your words will bring out that peace, and that's how faith works. You speak the things, and, that's, and it happens, right? That's faith. And says, let the peace of God umpire your hearts. In other words, I let it rule my heart before I speak. To which also you are called into one body and be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. See, this is, this is what you want to do. This is how you measure. That's how you walk in peace. Is, is how rich is the word of God inside you. Now, once it's in there, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and spirits, psalms, singing with grace in uh, your hearts to the Lord. So, uh, when, the, when there 
there's peace, that's when I speak in my prayer. Again, there are times when uh, I, I can't get anywhere, and then I realize, wait a minute, I need to use authority, exercise authority, and, and then I speak that. It, it depends on the situation. I listen to the Holy Spirit on these things. But the point is, is, once you have the peace, once you get in your mind, in your heart, the direction, that peace that is providing the understanding for how to pray, <coughs> once I get that, then I can then I can actually act on it, whether I'm commanding or demanding things of the devil, or I'm praying in prison and asking and beseeching and you know seeking the Lord. All right. When I, when that peace is in my heart, it's going to, and I release that word based on the peace that I sent in my heart in my prayer during my praying. Well, then uh, then. What am, I, what am I doing is I'm causing the, the characteristic of that born-again heart, which has peace, to be active in my life. The, the, the fruits of the Spirit grow as you speak and do them, act on them. you got to use your faith. <coughs> you got to believe it's there. And when you believe it's there, then you act on it. And when you act on it, then you grow in the fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit... Are, are respond to your actions. They grow into your. They grow according to your actions because you got to, everything with God begins with faith, and, that, and you have to use. If you want to grow in the areas of, of the fruits of the spirit, you got to act in faith. Now, one of the things that I wanted to share in um, in the scripture is this morning. I, you know, I believe I mentioned uh, Mark chapter five, uh, four where it says that uh, Jesus, we'll just go there, Mark 4, 35, and it says, on the same day when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when he had left the multitude, they took him along the boat as he was, uh, uh, along in the boat as he was, and the other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep in the pillow, on a pillow, and they awoke him, said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we perish? And then he arose and he rebuked the winds and said to the sea, Peace, be still, and the wind uh, ceased, and there was a great calm. Uh, but he said to them, Why are you, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared, they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to ask you something. Would they have gotten to the other side of that lake if the wind hadn't stopped? And if the waves hadn't crashed against it? Would they have? And why is that? He said so. So it's important to understand that. However, when he was awakened, okay, he did rebuke the storm, and he did calm the seas. He exercised his authority, which you have. You have the same authority. Over the natural elements that were in front of him. And he, ex and he, and he commanded, exercised his authority over it, and of course it stopped. And he was teaching us these things, that we can do the same thing, you know, understand. Uh, if he can do it, we can do it, amen? You know, uh, I don't know if we can do it better than him, but we certainly can do it equal to him. Because he gives that authority to us. And yes, it's important that you understand that he, they would have made it to the other side, whether he rebuked that wind or not. It just became a whole lot easier with the wind and the storm not being an issue. They could have probably continued uh, shoveling, uh, you know, using their buckets to get all those uh, water out of the boat the whole time, and they probably would have made it to the other side that way as well. Uh, and, but imagine the turmoil that would have been there the whole time. They would have been worn out by the time they got to the beach. Okay? Folks, that, that's a picture of your, yours and my lifestyle. Okay? Our living. You know, we, we can, we, we say we'll go to the other side. We will. But whether we go to the other side nicely, 
or, uh, or there's a lot of extra work that we end up doing that were, is unnecessary. Same thing here in this case. It would have been unnecessary. To, but let me ask you something. Jesus was asleep in the stern. Folks, that kind of peace is in your heart. Jesus knew he was going to the other side no matter what. And same thing, I don't care if you're facing whatever you're facing. Uh, when you issue and walk and speak and pray according to the peace of God, you pray to the peace of God, you expect it. And that same power that, was, that allowed Jesus to sleep in the middle of that storm will occupy and fill your heart. You see that? But if you learn to exercise your authority, you can make the trip a whole lot easier. And that's what Jesus ended up doing. So, uh, I just wanted to encourage you, pray to the peace. Pray to the peace. That peace is so powerful, you can sleep in the midst of a demonic whirlpool. A demonic whirlwind. And you'll be okay. But, you have the extra benefit as Jesus where you can rebuke that storm and stop those demons too. Okay? Hallelujah. So pray to the peace. Speak to the peace. Uh, if, if you don't have peace, don't say it. Don't pray it. Pray it only when you know you have the peace. Because if you pray according to that peace, you'll have understanding in your praying. And you will get the job done the way it needs to be done through prayer. All right. I want to encourage you right there. The Prince of Peace is on the colt this morning. Amen. He's in our life. Hallelujah. Let's give it all over to him. Father, we do bless you and thank you as we get ready to worship and lift up your name. Thank you for the word of truth, encouraging us and speaking to us and taking this message even further into our lives and in actual living it out in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.